This is what God ordered today. Um, this evening, beginning at sundown, we will celebrate. It begins the Feast of Tabernacles. And during these fall feasts, God is just blessed tremendously. I mean, just, oh my Lord, it's been amazing. But let me get to my assignment today. Let's look at Leviticus 23 and 33. It reads, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, the 15th day of this month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it for seven days. You shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. And the next verse says this. These are the feast of the Lord. And let me drop down to verse 40. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of beautiful trees, branches, and palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook, and you shall do what? You will do what? You will do what? For seven days. Is that too long to rejoice in the Lord? <laughs> no <laughs> and the next verse you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year and it shall be a statute how long in your generations you shall celebrate it in the seventh month you shall dwell in booths for seven days, all who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am. Can you shout, I am? I am. Can you shout again, I am? I am. I am the Lord your God. So Moses declared to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Can we praise God in advance for his word? study this, Leslie, I, I read it, and then I push back from my desk, and in my mind, I see Jerusalem, which sets on a hill. It sets on a hill, and there are millions of people who have traveled to Jerusalem following what I just read to be in the Holy Land on this significant day. They're there a million plus. And this is said to be the time this season, pay attention, this season of which Jesus was born. And so if there were millions of people in Jerusalem 
then it makes sense of the scripture that says there was no room in the end. And while they were there on this hill, all of the Israelites built booths. These temporary shelters. And they were decorated in the things that I just read from the scripture. And the booths reminded them of how God brought them out of the land of Egypt. Out of captivity. And while they were in the wilderness, how he covered them. He protected them. He provided for them and gave them everything they needed while they were in the wilderness. Jesus, who just spoke here, preached a week ago. It shocked me because I didn't know he was going to preach. And he said something to the effect that Some people say negative things about the wilderness, but God created the wilderness. And those who have been in Zion Global Ministries from the start know this, that we've been in the wilderness, but we understand that God always has an oasis. In the wilderness. And if you've ever been in the wilderness and God created an oasis for you in the wilderness, covered you and sheltered you and kept you and blessed you out in the wilderness, let's go up in praise right now. Hallelujah. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. Out in the wilderness. So as, as Grady, as they're putting up every frame and decorating every bit of it, they're remembering how God kept them out in the wilderness. And they're giving him thanks and praise, not just for the past, but for the present. You see, this came at the gathering of their harvest. <laughs> when, they <laughs> when they gathered the crop together. And this was their way of saying, God, thank you for the corn, for the pears, for the bread. You've been good. You provided everything that we need. You are the Lord of the harvest. So thank you for the harvest. Amen. I've been telling the former groups that I got a caution in my spirit and uh, a bit of sensitivity for those who would come in today and you say, you know, I hear you preaching uh, that we're all supposed to be thankful to God for the crop, for the harvest. The crop means basically profit, um, gain. And some people say, you know, this wasn't a good year. I didn't, I didn't have much of a harvest. I didn't have much of a crop. And there's something that I'm supposed to tell you. And, and it's this. I got to share with you that there was a time, a period in my life where I didn't have an income. But, but God taught me not to evaluate profit by monetary gain. See, your profit can come and just walk in with God in that time of lack. 
and experiencing who he is and what he can do. How he is a keeper of his promises. Can I get a witness here? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? And Tracy is, is my witness. During that time of lack is when I actually profited the most. Because it's in that time I gained something that you can't put a price tag on. You know what I learned? I learned how to walk in faith. Yes, sir. I I learned how to walk in faith. I learned that when you trust God and there's nothing in the barrel, when there's no oil in the jar, if you trust God, God will fill up that jar. And when you start pouring, it'll just keep keep on pouring and keep on pouring and keep on pouring and keep on pouring and keep on pouring. So much so. That you got more than what you need and you can share with other people. That's how God blesses me. That's the kind of God I serve. And that's the kind of God you serve. So don't look at. Don't look at your pennies and your quarters and, and your dollars. Look at what you gain from just being with God. Look at what you gain and him just keeping you. Now bring that praise to him. Bring that thanks to him. Bring that glory to him. In the wilderness. Let's just pause. Some people are getting this right now. Give God glory all over this place. Come on. Bless him that he was with you in the wilderness. He is, he is the I am God. And they, they're celebrating the I am God. So they're decorating this altar, the I am God. And then they have torches all around the booths. Now imagine you got millions of huts on this hill that sets up. And when all of that gets lit up, It's glistening like a tiara on a queen's head. It's just sparkling. Yeah, bring the lights down so they can get this. I'm going to tell y'all something. And this is going to be an awakening for you. The Feast of Tabernacles is also called the festival of lights. Now put that on the clothesline of your mind and let the Holy Ghost blow on it. It's called what? The festival of lights. And as Forrest Gump would say, That's all I have to say about that. Bring the lights back up. You said it, I didn't. But what you're thinking is right. Festival of Lights. Festival of Lights. Everybody say what? Festival of Lights. What is it? Festival of Lights. God really has a sense of humor. What's it called again? Festival of Lights. And somebody said it. 
Satan is such a copycat. He tries real hard. But don't be fooled with the okie doke. What's it called? Man, y'all are in here and you're making me see things different. The festival. And what happens at a festival? Celebration. God had this in mind before the foundations of the world. And so when Adam and Eve sin and darkness came in the world I said the one who spoke light said okay I know what's going on here but there shall be light in the world and he called the children of Israel to be his light They rebelled against it. You know, all of us have gone through experiences where we like dark. Unloose your halo. No, I want to be in the light. And they rebelled against the light, but then God would call Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Deborah in the book of Judges where it's really dark. It's so dark. It says that there arose a generation of children that did not know God. It was dark. Then he raises up several kings, David and Solomon. But again, Satan is doing what he's trying to snuff out the light. And wickedness became so pervasive that the glory of the Lord, the light of God, departed from the temple. God said, Ichabod, the glory, the light was gone. But that didn't mean that God was done with his desire for light to be in the world. He sends his son. John 8. And it opens up with Jesus going, wow, into the temple. And there's a woman who has darkness all around her and inside of her. And they want to stone her because they catch her in an act of adultery. And Jesus says, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Then he turns to the woman in verse 10 and says, where are your accusers? He says to her, go and sin no more. Then he looks up in the verse 12 at everybody still remaining. And he says, what did he say? You brought her in here in a dark space of her life. But now I've spoken to her. I am the light. And now the darkness that was inside of her has to flee. She will forever see herself in a different way. Because she has the light of 
life. Anybody here know something about the light of life? I will say this. You are here because of the light of life. You see, depression, self-condemnation is a powerful thing. It can cause you to want to take yourself out. But then hearing the word of God bring in light helps you to understand that better days are ahead. So Jesus declares, I'm the light of the world. And he just, he's, he just, he's not content in being the only light. Matthew 5 and 14. Let's go there. He then says, <laughs> he says, <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? I love this thing that you did yesterday in your, the prophetic conference where there's this activation where people were called forth to sing to the Lord, and then she would have so, somebody to actually act as the voice of God singing back to them. It was a powerful thing. And so this is actually the Lord speaking to his disciples, and he's saying, I'm the light of the world. And in turn, he says to them, you are the light of the world. There's this activation, there's this transference of power. I'm the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You're the light of the world. You're a city as a city that set what? That what? This is, this is something for all of us. And all of us have been in a place where we've gone into places and we tried to hide. But you can't hide it. Um, one of my members dropped me a note. She was so happy. In between services, where is it? She said, we learned songs as children. This little light of mine. What? And then they taught him, hide it under a bushel. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let it shine. All around the neighborhood. Let it shine. That's right. Don't forget that part. Say, Jesus gave it to me. And what are you going to do? There you go. Next verse. You don't put it under a basket. But what? So even in Jerusalem, these lights were, if you study it, they were up high on lampstands. Next verse. Let's read it together. You know the story, the disciples, as Leslie said, took the light that Jesus gave them and they began to share it with many other people. 
darkness in different places and different nationalities was dispelled by the light. Satan wasn't happy. And in church history, it's phenomenal to me. It came to me this morning as I was teaching. But the church actually went through a place called the Dark Ages. It was Satan's attempt to extinguish the light. And that's not foreign to us if we're really honest about our Christianity. Many of us have gone through a period of dark ages. But thanks be unto God for his grace and mercy who brings us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Satan tried. He tried. He tried real hard. Then God shows me this, and it absolutely blew my mind. The second to the last book of the Old Testament is Zechariah. And the last chapter is chapter 14. I want you to turn there with me, if you please. And let's go to verse 16. And then while you, you're turning at it, let me set this up for you. Zechariah prophesies long, 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 long before Jesus is born in the earth. Long, long, long before. And in his prophecy, he gives us a picture of what's going to happen in the end times. And in this particular verse, and I don't have time to really break it down, so just follow me here. He goes past the rapture. This goes past the tribulation period. This is in the time of the thousand year reign on the earth. And he gives us a panoramic view of what's going to be happening in that time. He says this, and it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. It's been prophesied that there's going to be an army, an alliance of different nations that will come against Jerusalem and they're going to be defeated. But those who are left shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts. And guess what they're going to celebrate? Did y'all hear the baby say, duh? <laughs> like, y'all been on this earth all this time. Y'all been going through all of these different holidays. You been running around, stressing yourself out. Duh! Don't you get it? What's going to be celebrated when we get to the end time? Hold on now, Pastor. It's right there. And I need you to say it. What's going to be celebrated? What's going to be celebrated? And the other name for the Feast of Tabernacles is the Festival. Oh. Wow. 
what festival of lights? Really? Duh. And the next verse says this. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts. And you read it. What does it say? Okay, because, because in this period, uh, it will be the fulfillment of the Lord's prayer that we pray. This, will ha- this is what will happen. Thy kingdom come. God's kingdom will be on the earth and he will reign in the kingdom. Praise God thus far for revelation, and I'm about, to, I'm about to tie this up for you. Come on, you can do better than that. I think you can do even better than that if, you, if you're getting something out of this. Yeah. Okay. There are a few things that I got to tell you, and um, I need you to write these down. This is really important. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Remember I told you that the children of Israel to do what? Go up to Jerusalem? Why did they have to go up? Because it sets on a hill. Yeah. Let me give you some scripture for that. Mark 10 and 32. Mark 10 and 32. It says, now they were on the road doing what? They were doing what? They were going down to Jerusalem. They were, thank you. I like the emphasis. She said they were going up. Everybody said they were going up. And Jesus was doing what? Jesus was doing, and they were going where? Yeah, and they were amazed as they followed, they were afraid. And I like the honesty of Mark there. Jesus took the disciples aside and basically said, I don't want you to be afraid, but some things are getting ready to happen. In the next verse, my enemies are coming for me. I'm about to die. But remember what God said, and I need you to keep going up. Keep going where? Keep going where? Um, is Miss Johnson here? Oh, there you are. There you are. I told you I had a word for you. And, um, this really messed me up as I, as I was studying, and I had to call you. Um, it was just a sense of urgency, because I wasn't looking for this at all. 
Um, Aaliyah, come here, sweetie. Come walk with me, sweetie. Um, Cynthia, come sit here. Just put your hand on my shoulders here and walk with me. Behold, we're going up. To Jerusalem. I'm going to turn around. You just keep your hand on my shoulder. We're going up to Jerusalem. Where are we going? Yeah. Sweetheart, the phrase, we're going up means Aaliyah. Where we going? Where we going? We're going where? We're going up. Follow me. In order to get to Jerusalem, it sits on a hill. We got to go up. Aaliyah means ever ascending. It's going up. Going up. Let's go, let's go back. Stay with me. Come on. Hands on my shoulder. <laughs> so for your entire life is what I'm to say to you. You're always to go up. You will have people inviting you to come down. But your reply has to be, no. I'm not coming down. Just keep walking. Every day, I'm supposed to tell you, you have choices. And I pray that you choose to go higher. That's what I'm to tell you. Let's keep going. Let me tell you something. Higher is harder. But it's out of the hard things that you gain strength. Put your hands on my shoulder. And you were elected before you were born to go up. You know what you just did? You did that on your own. (laughs) 
see your place when you accepted Jesus he destined for you to go up and to be seated with him how to see in the heavenly places What are the odds as I'm ministering to you that God will put a word right in front of me about you? They don't have to know what's going on, but you know God is saying some things. Cynthia and Judah, y'all come on up and I need y'all to pray with her while I keep ministering. You stay right here, baby. Praise God for the way he's speaking here. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, Judah. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're going up. Tell somebody else, we're going up. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, the Holy Spirit is just interrupting this worship. For those of you that feel as though the enemy has been pulling you back and, and, and down and, and just holding you back, I want you to come up close because we're going to pray with you in a minute here. So I need y'all to just come forth. If you feel that the enemy has been just pulling you down and he's had his foot on your neck, just, just come forth. And, amen. Come on, have a seat here. Have a seat here. And I'm, we're going to, we're going to pray with you, my God. Shout, we're going up. Where are we going? We're going up. Y'all can be seated. We're going, where are we going? Here's the other thing, and I, I guess all of what I have to say, I'm going to have to write it out because I'm, I'm full and I'm, I feel the power of God here. Zechariah gives us a picture. It, this is an apocalypse. Um, the apple there means to remove. Calypsis is, apocalypsis is the Hebrew word from which we get our word apocalypse. And calypsis means a veil. So he's removing this veil. The enemy has a way of veiling our, our eyes with lies. Paul speaks of the God of this world has blinded our eyes. And what's going on here even now as I'm teaching is God is pulling back the veil. There's an awakening where a light shines and we get a chance to see what God sees in us. It, it shines. Darkness is, is dispelled. So I want you to just put your hands together and begin to praise God for the removal. And we're starting to see things like, ah, I didn't, I didn't know that was there. Yeah, but it's is, is there and he gives us further clarity this picture of what's going to happen 
Um, let me go right on to verse 20 of Zechariah 14. And I'm, a, I'm about finished. It opens, that verse opens up with, in that day. Everybody say, in that day. Come on, shout it, in that day. day. Holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. Imagine that. Shout in that day. It's going to be powerful. When I saw that, it made me think of a game being played at the Ohio State Stadium. And in this particular game, there are the Ohio State Buckeyes against the, what, Michigan Wolverines? Yeah. Yeah. And the stadium is packed with over 100,000 people. And all eyes are on the tunnel and waiting for the Buckeyes to make their exit from the tunnel. Yeah, their, their entrance onto the field. And there's so much excitement and, and fervor. And some eyes are on the tunnel but there are many eyes on the jumbotron as there's all of this electricity that's happening and then boom, they come out. Imagine this, when the Lord returns to get all of this mess straight. Well, he's gonna put an end to the antichrist. And then Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years as he gets ready for his imminent demise. And all eyes are on heaven. John picks up where Zechariah left off. John 19 and 11 said, now I saw, let me tell you what I saw. I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and righteousness. He judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. What's his name, Stefan? What's his name? That's what I'm talking about. That's kind of fervor that should be in the place of God. When we talk about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and on that day, making his entrance onto the field of time for the last time will be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can you shout all over this place? Because then victory is going to be ours. Stand to your feet. I 
And it's going to happen on the eighth day. Just touch your neighbor and say it's going to happen on the eighth day. Yeah. What day is it going to happen? Eight, eight is a number of new beginnings. I want you to get this in your head. and You can bring this light, bring the lights down so we can really get in, in the moment of this. That will be the festival lights. That will be the end of time, but the beginning of eternity. And God's people will be able to walk into the eighth day. Let me say it again. And God's people will be able to walk into the eighth day. After which John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth all the old was passed away all things are new can you say the eighth day say it again the eighth day people of lights, I want you to think about all of the people who are lost in the world that don't know Jesus. Wow. Come here. No, behind you. Look at, look at this. Just go through the hourways. If you got a light, get your light. There are thousands and thousands of people that are unsaved. Lord, have mercy. I wish you could see what I see, but look around. I want you to think about your family members. You want them to be at the festival. You want them to be on the right side when the king of kings and the lord of lords returns. Just go ahead and begin practicing walking with your light in the hourways. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Banner, Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light. Beautiful. Shine on the dew drop. Of mercy shines bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Oh, Jesus, the light of the world, we walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew 
raindrops of mercy shine around, shine on. Let him lead. Beautiful life. See. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Oh, Jesus, the night of the world. We will walk in the light, beautiful light, on where the dew drops of mercy shine bright, shine on around us by day.
we will walk in the light. It's a beautiful light. Beautiful light. Shine where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Oh, 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 walk in the light. It's a beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. We're calling on you, Jesus, the light.